Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. In this video we're checking out the iRobot Brava Jet 250. Okay, so in this video we're going to unbox and set up the iRobot Brava Jet 250. If you decide to buy one of these like me, you're probably fed up with mopping your floor, perhaps you've got a dog or kids that just making loads of mess on your tile or wooden or laminate floor and you wanted to get a robot to take care of the dirty work for you or perhaps you're also a bit like me a fan of robot cleaning devices i have um, various nitos and i've also had irobot vacuums in the past uh, i also do have an irobot brava 200 i mean 300 series sorry uh, but i wanted to try one of these that has the jet on because i think it's going to do a slightly better job um, than my current brava in the kitchen environment that we have now. So if you're looking at uh, different devices like this, iRobot currently have three kind of ranges. They have the M series range, which start from around 700 pounds. They're the most recent and supposedly more advanced, but from the research I've done, these work pretty well. Second, obviously we have the 200 range. This has the jet and the 700 also has the jet as well. The 700 can auto dock and things like that. Whereas the 200 series is all kind of standalone does have a jet but only runs on a single battery and won't return to a doctor charge itself and there's a 300 series that doesn't have a jet and is basically a robot mop that will just kind of go around which is what i have today which works fine in kind of normal low traffic areas but i found like with the dog and stuff i'm hoping something like the jet is going to do a slightly better job so we'll unbox this in a moment what we should see in here is obviously the brava jet 250 we should have a battery in there along with seven different mops. So there should be two wet mops, two damp sweep mops, two dry sweep mops, one washable wet uh, mop, as well as um, one kind of cleaning solution as well. So let's unbox it and see what we have inside. So let's pop the box open like this to reveal the innards. So here we have it, uh, the jet in the middle here, which we'll take out in a moment, and this little accessories box. To pop this open, we have a hard floor cleaning solution. We have another hard floor cleaning solution. Here we have the different mops. So in here are two, I think it's just wet um wet mops here we have two i think this must be damp based on the little orange mark there and then another two dry mops and then here is uh i think the reusable washable wet mop We'll look at this in a bit more in the moment, but on the back here, it's these clippings that tell it what kind of attachment it has to the jet, so it knows what kind of mode it should be mopping in. There's nothing that you have to press on here other than the button to start to clean. Then we have a single battery here. It's a 3.6 volts, 1950 milliamp hour, 7.1 watt hour battery. And then we have just in here the charger and I've just noticed that this has come with a European plug in it so if there's no UK plug in there I have to find my travel adapter to be able to use this okay that's everything in there then we have the Java the Brava jet itself so as mentioned before a single push to clean button here here is um, where the jets of water is going to come out on the bottom here is uh, the slide in attachment for the mop a couple of uh, vents i think as opposed to sensors and the two wheels and the battery compartment just at the back here which we'll look at uh, this in more detail in a moment back to one side and then finally some uh, literature on kind of how we set things up 
and do all the charging. So let's move things to one side and then we'll look at this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so then the other things we have in here is a quick start guide that shows you how to plug in and start charging the battery. It flashes orange and we'll go green in a couple of hours when it's fully charged. Shows you how to put the battery in at the rear, which we'll look at in a moment, as well as how you slide the, the pads on and off, filling out the water and how to clean it. And also a recommendation to download iRobot Home, which we will do in a moment as well. In the little owner's guide, it does have some information about the different pads and some recommendations on it. So I'll just quickly show you uh, what that's all about. So this first one is the wet mopping option. So the blue pad, uh, this is good for triple pass coverage. Uh, similar to how you mop the floor itself. The robot drives forward a short distance to one side, backs up slightly, then moves forward to the other area. This is the one I'm gonna use for the test. And um, so that's uh, all good. Uh, this is the, obviously, the, the washable one that comes with this. Then we have uh, this white drying pad. There are washable versions of all of these, but only the one uh, washable one in this kit. All these ones are one use kind of throw away. So these, um, the robot will swiftly move forward in straight lines for single pass coverage. So kind of like, a bit more of like for buffing, I guess. Uh, the orange one is uh, gentle yet thorough cleaning. The robot drives forward a short distance, then backs up in a straight line, continuing his back and forth pattern as it cleans the area. And then the blue ones are basically the non-washable version uh, of this other blue one, which we will be using in our testing. So we'll check those out in a moment. It talks a little bit about um, the different options. So again, if you've got dirt and stains, you definitely want to be using uh, the blue ones. If you've got um, dust and dirt, then you can use the, the semi-wet ones, the damp ones, which are the orange ones. And then basically, if you've just got dirt, dust and hair, uh, and, and no stains you need to get tied up, then you can just use the white pads, um, just in a kind of a brushing type fashion. So that's all the information that we have in here. If we look around the robot now, I was actually wrong. These are cliff sensors on these corners. So cliff sensors in each of the corners. So again, if you've got um, tiled or wooden floor upstairs, you can definitely use this upstairs. It's not gonna go over the edge and just try and murder itself. As I mentioned already, is the battery pack, the single clean button here. This is a little handle that pops up. Then we have two things going on here. So one is the area where we fill the water. There's no funnel or anything, so we just be careful over the tap. And I do recommend only using this fluid um, the Brava Jet Fluid. Again, I don't know how good that's gonna be or not. Uh, that's the only stuff that they recommend and say it's safe to use in here. I'll put any links in the description, uh, obviously for the product as well as if I find any bigger bundle of that. And then this other button is the eject button for the pad. So let's just show you how we slide this on. So the pad goes on just in here. It has a sensor that detects just here what pad has been inserted so it knows what cleaning mode to enter. So we just carefully slide this in. It slides in super easily, just like that. And it's nice and firm, so it's not gonna come out when it's doing its mopping. If we lift this up, and if basically we hold that down, it just ejects the pad. So that's pretty much it. So we're gonna pop some the fluid in here, pop a bit of water in, and then we will do a time lapse of it mopping the dirty kitchen floor, which has got muddy dog footprints everywhere and see how it gets on. Okay, so the battery's nearly finished charging. So I've just been over to the kitchen and hoovered everything up. Obviously this is a mop, no backing capabilities. So you wanna make sure that kind of any loose debris is uh, kind of sorted up so you're not just scratching around on your floor. The cliff sensors should keep it off of the carpet. So if you have wooden or tiled floor with carpet transitions, it should avoid doing that. I will test that out at the end. I'll have my doors closed to start off with. I probably won't wait until the battery is fully charged, but because um, it takes two hours, I want to just kind of get this tested out. But the battery fully charged should last an hour. Um, it doesn't consume much energy, 71 uh, watts, and it's A rated, obviously. In terms of noise, it should be pretty quiet, 55 decibels. I will start off the video with a little bit of sound so you can hear what this thing sounds like when it starts off. 
Um, the water tank should take 2.8 liters of water. So we put some of that solution in and filled it up. In terms of size, it's pretty compact. As you can see already, uh, it's 8.4 centimeters high, 17.8 centimeters wide, and 17 centimeters deep. So it should be fine getting under sofas and under the kind of skirtings of kitchen units and that kind of thing. So there shouldn't be any problems there. And it only weighs 1.2 kilograms. So it's nice and light. So yeah, we're kicking this thing off. As you'll see in the video, the floor is pretty grubby. The tiles I have look nice when they're super clean, but they don't stay looking nice very long. So it'd be interesting to see um, how streaky it is afterwards. You probably could put this on with just the dry mop after if you wanted to kind of eliminate some of those streaks, but we'll see how this goes with the first pass and then come back with conclusionary thoughts. it it's run out of battery so it didn't manage to clean the whole floor but remember this wasn't a full charge it's only been on for I don't know about 30 minutes so it does recommend two hours for a full charge of the battery but hey, it's done actually a, pr a pretty good job the areas that it has mopped are nice and clean it's got rid of all the the dog paw prints and yeah as you can see the end of the mat or the mop mat is really Really dirty but yeah I'm gonna give it a, a proper charge and um, then I'm pretty confident it's gonna do the whole area but it was pretty thorough uh, I like the way it kind of goes around and when it hits the corners it kind of finds the line and follows it along and then goes up and gives a nice clean line on the corners like all mops and I guess especially when you've got the the wheels of the mop it does leave uh, a little bit of kind of residue or lines that just could do a little bit of a buff up and like I think I said earlier in the video you could probably just run that over with the dry mop and that's going to be good but no I think this works really well definitely having the, the water squirting does a, a better job than the mops that don't squirt so I think definitely for the money the 200 series to me is better than the 300 series and I don't think it's worth spending 700 pounds on the new m series because yes it can dock and resume everything but i think when you have a, a robot mop they do need a little bit more supervision so hope the video helped leave comments in the description and a thumbs up and uh, yeah see you next time okay i realized i didn't add a couple of things to the end of this video so first of all the app so the app is uh, pretty easy to install just download it from the apple store or the play store if you're using android you just set yourself up an account install it and it gives you very basic uh, information ability to stop and start the mop as well as kind of change a couple of the modes so you can do it into like a spot mode which kind of cleans outwards from a central space and then a, a virtual wall mode where basically it will ignore anything behind it so kind of acknowledge that as a, a virtual wall so 
That's kind of great if you had it on to separate from different rooms or something. And then the final thing that I forgot to add to the video is what happens when it hits uh, a carpet. So you can see in the overview here, it gets to the carpet, it goes up a little bit, but realizes it's got, gone to carpet, turns itself around and then comes back off. It does the same with um, rugs and doormats as well. So it works really well. I'm really, really kind of happy with how this is working. I've been using it kind of nearly every other day at the moment because the dog's making such a mess with those uh, muddy paws. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. Much better than the 300 series. And I think it was money really well spent. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.